Okay, in the limited time we have with uh, William K. Black, top uh, federal investigator of the SNLs, the Keating Five, helped send some of them to jail. And they got memos out from Keating saying, we want to kill this guy, kill him dead. Uh, clearly, uh, very, very scary people. And a lot of folks ended up uh, getting, uh, you know, dying uh, mysterious deaths, and not just here, but in Australia and BCCI and Clark Clifford and that whole CIA front. Uh, Mr. Black, continuing here, I want to go back briefly and, and then get into who's culpable, what Geithner's up to, you know, how we stop him, because there's this key nexus point, as you point out, when you got Paulson, you got Geithner, it now comes out that even, you know, before Obama was elected and after he was elected, they were already working with Geithner on writing up the bailout, the banker takeover, uh, when he was head of the New York Fed. And you've got the chief of staff, Emanuel from Wall Street. Uh, and, I mean, literally, it's this tight coterie, uh, this group of people in there working together, Republicans and Democrats, like I've never seen before uh, in modern uh, modern history and so but a lot of people you know email me and say oh don't bash obama you know this was bush that did all this and i'm like yeah bush did it and now obama's going along with it so can you break down what happened with the banker bailout and uh or from your own research is that bipartisan the banker bailout is fairly um bipartisan it uh, it's wrong not even so much frankly because of politics directly as because a very, very poor creation of the plan, uh, originally by Secretary Paulson, uh, and then eventually with the assistance of uh, Geithner when he was still president of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. This really wasn't compelled on them by the politicians. This is more they are so tight with the industry. Paulson in particular, after all, is the guy uh, who came from Goldman Sachs. Uh, had run Goldman Sachs before he became Treasury Secretary, had gotten Goldman Sachs into toxic waste. He's the guy that got them into trouble with toxic waste. Then he comes out, uh, and AIG is in trouble. He appoints a group to give him advice, and he puts Goldman Sachs, his own firm, on the advisory panel when it has a massive conflict of interest because... AIG owes it billions and billions of dollars. And guess what? They advise. They advise Paulson to use, to first to bail out AIG, and then to secretly bail out favored banks, and in particular Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs got $12.9 billion, the biggest single recipient of taxpayer money through this kind of bailout. And then both Paulson, and then it continued under the Obama administration, Geithner tried very hard to make sure that we, the public, would never learn where that our taxpayer dollars had done that. What changed that, and this is why people should not give up, was political pressure from Congress. And political pressure not on the administration, which was, you know, let it roll off its back like a duck, but political pressure on AIG. And here's what the mantra was. Not a penny more. Not a penny more of taxpayer money goes to AIG until we know how the money has been used. And that's pressure on AIG is the only reason we know about the Goldman bailout or that the fact that $50 billion roughly of U.S. taxpayer money went to bail out foreign banks foreign banks. Why would we do that? Including UBS, a massive Swiss bank that at the same time we were bailing them out secretly with $5 billion, the U.S. government tells us that UBS was involved in defrauding the taxpayers of America. We hit them with a huge fine, you know, it's a settlement of $780 million. But you do the math. If we gave them five $5 billion and they paid us $780 million, who really paid the fine? The U.S. taxpayers really paid that fine. Yeah, we're paying them to steal from us. And you've got uh, Bloomberg's reporting $12.8 committed. 
and that's almost the gross domestic product of the country. A am I right in saying this is the biggest fraud in history? Oh, easily. And, th and that's why I think our mantra should be not a penny more until we have a Bacora investigation started. Bacora was the guy, experienced prosecutor that we brought in the Great Depression to say, find out the facts. And the Wall Street fat cats hated him, detested him, fought him every step of the way. But he found the facts. He found the widespread fraud. And it led to many of the statutory changes that for 50 years worked so successfully in America until Wall Street, you know, finally got enough political juice to get rid of the laws in uh, right near the end of the uh, Clinton administration. Now, on record, uh, it was the Clinton people with the Republicans in tandem in the 90s that gutted most of this. And then George W. Bush uh, was a happy participant in the run-up to what we see now. Uh, can you speak specifically to that? Uh, and in your own words, is this not a complete hijacking of our entire economy by Wall Street? Well, yes, I can speak to that directly. And yes, it was at the, uh, they were at the beck and call of the industry. The uh, laws passed by overwhelming margins. Uh, but uh, this was very much a Reuben Summers and Phil Graham working together special uh, to get rid of uh, Glass-Steagall. Uh, and then the shutting down of Brooksley Bourne when she was trying to regulate these credit default swaps that uh, destroyed AIG, uh, that again was a Summers and Phil Graham uh, working together uh, to destroy. And they, that, this is so bizarre. They not only passed a law that stopped her particular proposed regulation, the law said you can't regulate to protect the, people, the taxpayers at all. So they are legislating protection of crime. Uh, for people that don't understand, can you explain what, tac uh, what, what toxic, uh, I mean, for those that may not be able to grasp it or who've heard it bantered around in the media but don't, you know, get exactly what it is. Can you explain what these toxic, toxic waste assets are? I mean, am I right in saying they're just fiat, uh, fraudulent, Ponzi scheme, uh, mining stock in Arizona type, uh, you know, crud that they then have big insurance companies certify, and then that becomes another toxic layer of debt. Those certifications are then traded, and and and, and then how many layers in the pyramid? Uh, you know, as they as they nest like like Russian dolls, uh, these frauds within each other. I mean, this is this is the biggest. Uh, I mean, I mean, to my mind, it, it's just such a ridiculous scam on its face. Well, you're right that it's layered. It isn't uh, typically mining stock. Uh, you know, fake mining stock. It was typically uh, what we call subprime or liar's loans. Was the what we call the underlying. And that means, in it, as it became, in truth, in 2006, 2007, lending to folks where a very substantial number of the people were going to default on the mortgages. We're talking, you know, maybe 25%. Uh, typically, default rates on prime mortgages run under 1%, to give you a contrast. So something 25 times as bad, roughly. And then you had, then you did create lots of uh, elaborate, uh, we call them financial derivatives on top of them, some of which took the form of supposedly being insurance. They used the, the language of insurance, but in reality, they were just pretty much open guarantees. Uh, that's what credit default swaps are in reality. And you're right that that not only layered, but if you think about it like those kids' games where you, you try to stack things on top of each other yes and, and they can hold up and they can hold up but they start shaking and they become more unwieldy and the bad news is the, the longer it holds together before it collapses the bigger the collapse and the more damage when it collapses so the old adage of the bigger they are the harder they fall yeah well now the, they don't fall at all right 
we, they're not allowed to fall. I mean, the, uh, President Obama was asked at press conference, now this is about six weeks ago, and he said, well, you know, hardly any banks are in, in trouble. And then he was asked, well, good, are you going to close the ones that are? Oh, no, no, we're not going to close any large banks. Well, what happens when you give people immunity in advance? It causes recklessness. Uh, At so best. Recklessness on a good day, outright fraud on most days. So, 